Hello and welcome to Component Carousel. This is the second episode of Component Carousel. With us, we have Cassie Evans, the great Cassie Evans. Cassie, hello. 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 How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. It's great to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Cassie does that whenever she doesn't want me to talk to her. She just puts her hand. She says, talk to the hand. Does it to me all the time. It's just part of our friendship. It's like, Focus has gone wrong. I know, I know. <laughs> <It's me now. laughs> It's rude, but it's, you know, it's part of our thing. No, it's awesome. <laughs> hello, hello, everyone. Um, so, Cassie, it is, it is so great to have you. Um, I'm I, a huge fan of, of your code pen work, of your, I mean, you, your, your personal website is just a delight. Um, everything you do, I, I've heard nothing but good things about your SVG workshop. I haven't attended yet, but um, I have great news for everyone in the chat, and some people have already... Uh, queued in on it. I see Angela's all already entered. Um, oh no, actually, you know what? Hold on one sec. Angela, you're gonna have to do that again in one second. I'm so glad I didn't uh, forget this. It's not running. The raffle bot is not running. So give me two <laughs> seconds. I need to make sure that that is running. Wake up the raffle bot. What's that? I said wake up the raffle bot. Yes, I need to wake up the raffle bot. Uh, Phantom bot. All right launching it give me two seconds everybody let's see what we got it's doing this whole thing connected all right connected to that thing i think we're good to go uh let's see let me just double check this real quick phantom bot let's log in uh, blah, 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 your control panel let me just log in real quick All right, so I think we're good to go. If not, we will do a manual thing at the end. I don't want to hold this up too much just because I forgot to run the raffle bot. I think we're good. Um, Angela, can you type enter one more time and I'll see if we get anything or just, yeah, I, th I think we're good to go. Anyway, hello, welcome. Um, raffle bot or not, we are going to be giving away uh, a, a ticket for Cassie's next SVG workshop. It's not scheduled just yet, but Cassie... Uh, give some of the the best SVG workshops are around. Oh no, it's, uh, hold on one sec. We're just getting all kinds of stuff that we gotta fix a little bit. Chat, chat is coming up above us. And there we go, now we're fixed. Um, so, <laughs> Cassie's workshop. Sorry, I'm getting all distracted, all the little things. There's so much, like, it's, it's like, it feels like, it feels like <laughs> flying an airplane sometimes. So you're like, oh, this knob's now like lighting up and this one's, so I'm just like trying to like put out little mini fires or whatever, but hello to everyone in the chat. So glad you're here. Um, please hit uh, exclamation mark enter and you will be entered to win uh, a ticket to Cassie's next workshop. So that's scheduled right now, but as soon as it's scheduled and as soon as it comes around, uh, we, we will reach out and get you that ticket. Um, it, this is one of the best prizes I could possibly think of. Every time Cassie runs a workshop, people are just are just thrilled about it. I've heard nothing but good things. They create the most amazing stuff with SVG and animations and everything. Do, do, do you want to chat real quick about what, what you, you, you go through in that workshop or in those workshops? Yeah. I always feel like I'm cheating when everyone's like, oh, your workshops are so amazing because it's just everyone makes really amazing things. Like all the people that come along are just so creative and so fun and so everyone nice. makes amazing stuff. So I get loads of things to share afterwards. Um, but yeah, we're basically we cover all of the things that I've learned along the way about SVG. So animating with CSS and animating with GreenSock. Um, and the kind of like little tips and tricks, um, easing, setting up an animation, planning it out, um, morphing, clip paths, like a bunch of cool stuff that SVG has that isn't really to do with animation, but that's kind of where the magic is. Um, so yeah, lots of lots of bits. That's awesome. No, I'm yeah. So uh, please please enter and. Cassie even gave some even uh, not even cooler news. It's it's not cooler, but it's it's still really cool. Um, stickers. So to runner ups, to, uh, how many did you say? And twenty stickers. Let's do ten. Let's just cut it at ten because mailing twenty things is is a lot of work for you. Uh, but Cassie's going to give ten people who don't get the grand prize, but ten runner ups. Uh, what do we got? Get wrecked. It's an SVG pun, people. It's a pun. It's SVG. It's perfect. So you get a sparkly Cassie sticker. Um, so please, please, please enter that. Um, if if we, 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 we don't get to do the thing. Oh, what is that one? It's a one from my workshop. Oh, that's so good. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen that one. That's great. 
Oh, that's great. Awesome. Thanks, so Chris. yeah, please enter. Uh, 11 people are, are going to get something fantastic. So um, today we're going to be doing some, some fantastic stuff. We have a lot going on because uh, the premise of this show, everyone, if you're just joining us, this is Component Carousel. And the entire premise is that on this show, we make fantastic components that uh, kind of take a, a very boring component that you might have to do in your day job. Like if you had to do a team component or a typical sign-up form, and it's just kind of like, okay, this is fine, but you kind of wish that you could do some of the stuff that you see on CodePen, like some of the stuff that Cassie does on CodePen. You're like, I, I want to be doing that at all day. That's kind of what this is. It's taking those more boring components, standard components, and just letting some of the best creative developers have at it and come up with whatever they want. So it is structured around a theme. As you can see down below, it says April's theme is Bounce House Architects. So basically, uh, Adam Kuhn last week, Cassie this week, George Francis next week, and Liam Egan the week after, everyone in April gets to build a component around that really fun, bouncy, squishy, colorful theme. So today, Cassie's going to be taking us through an animated castle builder, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. So I am so glad. We're all going to learn cool. stuff as well because I don't have a huge amount of experience with React. Um, That's the other thing. <laughs> we're all going to learn things. Yeah, so it's going to be in a Next.js app um, using a little bit of Prismic Slice Machine and a couple other things but also with Greensock and SVG. So we're kind of combining these things. I'm a little bit more knowledgeable with React. Cassie is here with the Greensock and the SVG knowledge. And so we're going to kind of work together a little bit and try to get something up and running. If we don't, uh, we'll just fall back to what Cassie's already made. And <laughs> <laughs> we'll just stick with that. Um, so with that, I'm going to bring up, let me just make sure I got everything set. I'm going to bring up kind of the state of things. And I think I already broke something on the website. Yeah, I definitely did. Let me, uh, let me, yeah, I'll, I'll bring this in and then we'll fix Adam's uh, component that I already broke. He's going to, he, that guy is going to lash out at me. We, we, all, we all know Adam Kuhn. He's, uh, he's, he's an angry, no, <laughs> he's easy. He is an absolute delight. Um, so this is the, the, the site as it stands right now. We have Adam's awesome email form that I, I broke when I brought it over to React. I had to like size it down because it was kind of built for CodePen. Um, so right now it has a, a set height that's, that's making it kind of break. But here is kind of the unstyled version of um, what we're going to be making today with Cassie. So um, as you kind of go through, you get to uh, go between these different stages and choose like your your different castle this is this is fine like all right cool it's you know it's, it's it's interactive or whatever but it's not really great so we're going to be um adding a lot more to it or or at least do you want to kind of talk about what what we're doing today specifically oh adam's just joined the chat uh -oh, uh -oh. <laughs> adam adam look 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 adam it's broken right now i'll fix it all right i just please please don't threaten me again <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I I just recently broke it. <laughs> what have you done? He shouts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, cool. So do you want to talk about what, what we're going to be working on today? Yeah. So um, I just thought it would be quite cool to kind of have a bouncy castle builder. Um, so we're going to be making, well, building a little bouncy castle animation and then hooking that up to a range slider. Um, so we've got a few steps to go. So we've kind of got like one room or two rooms or three rooms. Um, and then it should animate in between those. Um, so yeah, we're going to kind of dig into green sock timelines and things a awesome. little bit. Awesome. It gets a little bit tricky with um, green sock and react but uh a, a friend ryan labar uh if, if you're watching thank you ryan kind of helped me like like re reason through the best way to do it um because the, the way that i've done it before uh wasn't great so we're, we're gonna be doing it the right way now so thank you ryan so um without any other uh well okay so let let me kind of walk through how we're building this out um so We've got a couple uh, development tools at our disposal so that we don't have to, hey, thank you, Jux56, and everyone else at the beginning who uh, followed. You are all now horses. Congratulations. Welcome to the uh, 
stable let's go with i don't know we're still working on we're still workshopping it welcome to the stable um so we have a few different development tools at our disposal that we're going to be working with today uh george thank you um we have storybook many of you might be familiar with storybook it is a great way to build out um robust and uh just really solid ui components um so over here we kind of have this uh, this component mocked out already. And these are just like some, some stock photography because this is in our mocks. Um, we have Adam sign up form here. I think it works here. No, it's probably broken here too. I probably broke it everywhere. Uh, but Storybook helps us build out these components in isolation. Christina, thank you for being a horse. Welcome. You are now a horse. Um, we have Slice Machine, which is a prismic product that basically helps us create um, what what we call slices where it's just like a section of your website. So uh, the castle creator is going to be a section there and this helps us to define our actual types. So like we have our a, a few text types and here we have an image, but we'll be getting rid of that image when we bring in your castle, right? But so this kind of just helps us mock out that initial data and uh, define those types. And then over in Prismic, we actually have the, uh, the, the homepage that we're building here and here's the images and we can add this text and everything. So um, if we got, we got a few different things. We got the actual website running in development. Um, we have Slice Machine where we define our types. We have Storybook where we um, where we we see our components and we'll probably be using this the most, right? So this is kind of like our development environment in isolation. So we're just looking at that one component. Um, and then whenever we, we want to change the title or anything, like create your castle, we can come back here and change create your castle to match that. So I know that's a lot, don't worry. I'm, I'm here to walk you and everyone else through it. Um, the only things we're gonna worry about right now is pretty much just storybook and um, our code. So we're going to VS Code. Uh, we already have this castle creator uh, right here. I was gonna keep that up because here's, here's our three development environment or our, our three uh, things running in the terminal. But right here is where we have castle creator and this just has the image and it has a little bit of state uh, to handle walking through each, each of those steps and changing the image. We're gonna gut this or just do whatever we need to do to get over to the, the better, the, the more fun um, thing that you have. And uh, to, to anyone watching at home, this is uh, VS Code Live Share or whatever. It is, it is so good. Cassie not only has, yeah, she just said hello to you through the internet. Isn't that amazing? I mean, you couldn't do that any, any other way. Um, <laughs> but so this actually gives Cassie um, my same terminal. So when she goes to localhost 8888, uh, she sees what I'm seeing. So like I, it, it, the request actually comes to me and it goes back out to her. So highly recommend this. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Are you going to say something? I don't. <laughs> you don't really. I can it's... see um, localhost three thousand. I can okay, see. Okay, let's fix that. Um, oh, okay, so yeah, localhost three thousand. I can't see, can't see the other two. The nine nine. Read nine, only. Nine. Why aren't they going through? Interesting. That is good information. Yeah. So that one. So three thousand worked. Let's bring up slice machine again. Let's see if I need to stop those and start those while you're on the thing. Shared servers. I see. Uh, as I've been saying for forever. It's terrible. Don't use this. It's the worst. Don't even bother. No. <laughs> Just talked it up and now I'm like Ugh, having to backpedal. Let me kill 3000. Um, if anyone knows why Storybook wouldn't be shared over over the wire, let me know. I don't know. I don't see any other read only. Read only. Shoot, because that's a big uh, that's a big issue. If not, copy server, unshare server. Anyone know how to share terminals? I had to reshare when this happens. Oh, All right. All right we've, got, we've got Brody. Brody, Aru, Aru, Brody. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, everyone. Couldn't help it. All right, uh, a little bit of technical details. Um, okay, gonna I'm gonna stop share. You think? Yeah. Keep keep looking at uh, at Brody, everyone. We're just gonna keep looking there. Uh, share server. Well, that's Doug. Show little guest appearance. Servers. Following ports are being shared. Okay, I might have said to say share server. Uh, one, two, three, four. There we go. Yep. 
There we go. Okay. I found it. Right. We're, we're, we're back in business, people. One, two, three, four. Okay, Cassie, can you try now? Because it says that they're all being shared. Uh, Brody is... Uh, I have a dog. Brody is close to second favorite dog. My sister might be watching. So let's say third favorite dog. Brody is fantastic. He, he is. Uh, he's, he's just so great. All right, so um, is we, local host 888? Yep, nice. Cooking on gas. Huh? So cooking on gas. Is that not saying? Sorry. Cooking with gas. Okay, yeah, 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 got it. <laughs> I heard. No, I, I, I heard. I'm clicking on cats, and I'm like, all right, that's not. I don't know why you have cats over there. Anyway, um, enough for what I didn't hear. Let's get to work. So, where do we want to start, Cassie? Um. So I'm just trying to work out what where, where everything is and what I can see. No worries. Um, cool beans. So, so um, I guess do we want to bring in the SVG first and kind of start with that? Yeah, do you wanna, that do wanna... sounds like the okay, best cool. plan. I've uh, I made a little SVG um, in advance. Um, yeah. I realized after I made it that it's very simple in terms of shapes, and I could have actually like we could have hand coded some of it because it's just kind of rectangles and stuff. But I did it the lazy way. I just washed it together in Illustrator. I don't think there's anything wrong with with that. If you're hand coding all of your illustrations, you have some kind of like pain <laughs> tolerance that <laughs> I don't have. Some it's a good out. artistic endeavor, but it I feel is. like I have, I have, um, yeah, important biscuit eating time and dog walking time. I mean, who's gonna eat those biscuits if if, if you're uh, coding yeah. SVGs all the time? All right, so um, do we want to paste that in somewhere? Yes, where do we want to paste cool. it in? So here's what we can do. You can paste that in. Let's just make a, uh, I just made a castle.svg. If you want to paste that in there, I Ooh. can kind of take it from there and I will uh, show at least the audience uh, what we're going to do with that because we got a little bit of a trick for this to kind of make it a little bit more um, re React friendly. So do, do you see castle.svg <laughs> there? Yeah, I do. I'm just cool. paste in. Take your time. Uh, welcome. If you are just here, uh, make sure that you hit uh, exclamation mark enter to enter the raffle because, oh, nice. Very cool. Let me know when you're ready to go. Am I ready to copy? Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, yeah. So enter the raffle, uh, Cassie's SVG workshop. You will get a ticket to it perhaps, or there's 10 people that are getting stickers. So make sure you enter that. There's some good stuff there. Um, so when when we um, bring SVGs or pretty much lo lots of things into React, you can't always copy and paste code. Um, the, the one that's kind of famously known is class becomes class name. And there's just some other things that kind of need to be tweaked. Anything that's like kebab case, Cassie, is then um, turned into, what's the, is it camel? Yeah, I was, I was confused, oh. Pascal and camel. But yeah, so it, it gets camel cased. Um, there's just a couple rules like that. So. I always go to svg to jsx.com and if you uh, paste cool. it in you can then uh, kind of copy out the code on the other side what it does is it gives you a react component if, if i don't need the component i just grab the um the actual svg inside but i'm going to grab the whole thing right now and i will bring that back to our castle creator component so here um just at the bottom you'll see that i just pasted that same SVG, but now it's kind of wrapped in this um, icon um, icon thing. But I, I think, I'm thinking we might want to just have, so, okay, let's bring the, the SVG actually into, oh, it stripped out IDs, didn't it? Oh, uh, you see, no, no, it's- We need them. Yeah, we absolutely do. SVG to JSX, what do you, oh, here we go. Here we go, we're getting them back. They're coming back, here we go. That's good. Back. We right, can good. just animate paths randomly, um, but I don't know what. Yeah, to no. Just I, I think if we work off numbers, I think that's a little bit easier for everyone, right? Just say, like yeah, chaotic, uh, chaotic neutral bouncy path builder. Yeah, nth child, that kind of thing. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm bringing this into our um, actual code. I'm going to get rid of this slice part, and I'm going to paste that SVG there, um, and let's check out Storybook see if that's even coming through. Boom. First off, can we just have like a, uh, a chat round of applause for this awesome illustration? 
Uh, Cassie, we're, we're checking out um, 8888 right now. Uh, <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Like, it's just it's just a lot of fun, right? Like, I'm, I'm really excited for this. I can't wait it's, to see this, like, animated and everything. I'm it's sorry? It's a bunch of shapes. I said it's, it's definitely a bunch of shapes. It is I like shapes. I like illustrations that are just a bunch of shapes. Yeah, <laughs> we have triangles. Cool. We've got a rectangle. Oh, we've got some squares. We've yeah. got, yeah, we've got quite a few triangles in there. I, I'm kind of a fan of circles and hexagons, but I'm not going to bring it up. I'm not going to be salty about it. So it's, no it's fine. No see hexagons in bouncy castles. Not, not, not many, no. Not many. Um, so uh, from here, what do we, what do we need to do? So now we've got this castle set up, and um, we kind of have this uh, use state. So we've, we've, we've got our slider. How are we going to kind of connect the, the range slider into uh, the castle? So we're gonna not even think about the range slider right now, um, and we're just gonna have a little look at how you'd set up a timeline um, with GreenSock because we need to have something to connect to the range slider, and that's gonna be the timeline. Okay, so, cool. Um, the first thing is kind of like what I usually do when I'm working with SVGs. So what you'll usually have when the page loads um, before the JavaScript kicks in um, because the HTML, oh wait, we're in React land. Is this going to be different? Maybe, but ex usually, explain it and we'll see, we'll see how, how it's different, if it's different. So um, usually you'll have the SVG in the DOM, um, the same as you've got your HTML elements. So obviously it loads first and then um, the JavaScript will load. And if you're animating with JavaScript and you're animating from positions, um, say you're animating something from opacity zero and really small to really big, um, you'll get a flash of it in the DOM and then the JavaScript will kick in and it will go, oh, this needs to be really small. And then you'll see it disappear. And then when you animate it in, it will go big again. So usually what I do is go through the SVG and change bits to opacity zero cool. as and when I need them. But if we're in React land and everything's being loaded with React, then that's that's probably going to be pretty similar. So let, let's let's go ahead and do that. Do you want to? We're just going to do that on the SVG itself. Yeah. So a really easy way because I've I've gone through um, in Illustrator and I've just arranged everything into groups. Um, so we can see we've I got. Would, would, would you mind if, if we touched on that just super quick? Because I feel like that is something that when people, you know, like, like you kind of touched on how it's just a bunch of shapes, right? So it's like what, what you drew is fantastic, but it's also not out of like bounds for a lot of people in terms of like art skills or something, right? Like it's not like a portrait. So yeah. somebody put this together, but um, can you speak to like the importance of grouping just super quick? Yeah, so um, SVG code can be quite confusing because um, there's a lot of numbers and it's kind of like number number garbage. So it's good if you can go through in, in Illustrator or Affinity or whatever you're using to create SVGs or even if you're hand coding them um, and just make sure everything's labeled properly. And um, you can use the G tag, which is basically um, the, it's like a div in, in the SVG world. Like I always refer to SVG as like an alternate universe version of HTML, but for graphics instead of documents. Um, cool. Yeah, so it's like the G tag is what you have in SVG to group yeah. things. Perfect. And 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 then we 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 can say uh, like the turret, and then it'll move everything inside here, or it, it'll do something to everything in, in inside that group, right? Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Cool. So opacity. Do we want to do opacity equals zero? Yeah, so what I would, oh, no, you, you see, you're doing it the easy way. <laughs> do, do, I, I would I'm probably, I mean, we could actually, we could do it that way. Let's do it that way. Whoa. All yeah, right. let's do it that way because it's easier. This is thrilling. I'm <laughs> loving it. <laughs> cool. All right. So now we should have, if I save. We should have no castle. It's still taking up the space because opacity doesn't get rid of it in the DOM. It just uh, drops it down. So we got opacity zero. So now what? Okay. So then we're going to set up our um, starting styles with GreenSock. Okay. So where do we write the GreenSock code? 
Yeah. In that. So um, that is going to kind of come in to to in an in interesting part. So what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be using refs. And so that is just allowing us to access parts of the DOM within React, um, kind of the same way that you would do like a document query selector. We're doing the same sort of thing, but um, it gets saved as a const using a ref. So I'll, I'll kind of show how we're doing that. So we are already importing use state here from React. So we're going to also import another hook called use ref. And so with that, uh, wait, well, actually, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. Um, let me back up because I'm, I, I don't want to confuse you and the people watching. So we are going to use, uh, some, some refs, but that's for something different. Okay. What we're going to be doing first is using, uh, use callback and the concept of callbacks is, uh, probably familiar if, if anyone's familiar with, with JavaScript and just, I mean, Greenslack has a whole bunch of them. Um, when something fires, you can pass a function in here and use callback or, or um, that callback will be triggered. So in React, we can do use callback. And what we can do is we can put something right on this castle div or sorry, on the castle SVG so that when it's loaded in the DOM, this function will get called, right? So it was kind of the problem that, that you were talking about of we, we, we want to make sure that... Um, things are loading in and, and that we're, we're not trying to access this SVG before it's even in the DOM, right? So yeah. we're going to do, let me just make sure. Um, so we're going to do uh, a ref on the SVG and we're going to say castle ref. So, so that, that's, yeah. That's just checking if it's, if it's loaded. Yeah. So then. that, yeah, that, that ref, we, we can use that in, in, in a couple ways here. We're going to use it as a callback. If we wanted to access it in different ways, um, we could also use it as, um, a use ref. I'm, I'm not sure the, the, the best way to explain that bit. Uh, but basically this, th this function that we're going to load in is only going to get called once we, w once this loads into the DOM. So, okay, cool. uh, const, we're going to do const castle ref equals um and then use callback and that takes a function and uh the cool thing is what it gets in as the function is actually going to be the castle element okay cool and then we can do anything on that and we we have castle available to us so if we want then to... all of the code is just scoped to that particular yeah. castle that's nice yeah cool so um and one thing we want to do, we want to make sure that um, castle is actually here. So if not castle, we're going to return. And hey, this is just normal JavaScript stuff. I'm comfortable with that. Cool. <laughs> Perfect. So um, from there, what do we want to do? What do we want to do? OK, so um, we I guess we can we can animate like one little bit of it just so that we can see what a green sock tween does. Perfect. Um, so what have we got? We've got. Oh, no, wait, we made a pasty zero, didn't we? So that's we what did. we're going to do first of all. So we're going to say gsap dot set. Oh, it, it filled it in with. Uh, oh, 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 first uh, import gsap. I don't, I don't uh, even know if I have it installed yeah. on this project. I might not. Um, let me uh, yarn add gsap. Gasp is the uh, the less <laughs> popular gsap package. <laughs> All right, it is loading in. While that loads in, import gsap from gsap. Okay, cool. And then uh. Hold on. Oh, yeah, because I broke it. Let me just get rid of this. And we're good to go. Cool. All right. So uh, you're saying GSAP set? Yeah, GSAP set. And then we want to use the castle. So I guess do you just pass in castle? Yeah. Sweet. And then comma. And then we need some um, to pass in an object with some parameters in. Cool. Um, just uh, real quick we... chat. Was that helpful? I, I just made the text bigger. I just wanted to make sure that they can read everything we're doing. Hey, Henry, welcome. Thank you for coming through. So we're going to pass an object, you said? Yeah. Cool. Um, so we're just going to say a pass T1. So 
this is going to like undo what we just did. Which is just undoing what we just did, basically. And the castle's back. Sweet. Um, so a set is like a zero duration um, G set tween. It's good for like set start values and stuff. Um, so we're actually, I think, because we're going to do a timeline, I'll also occasionally, if I'm animating from somewhere, I'll use a from tween. And then that basically sets the initial values for you. So let's do a from tween for the center room. So okay, that's cool. Crazy. So um, a couple things that I, I, I think, so we, we can target by um, ID, but once we're inside here, it might be a little bit better if we scope it to, to the castle. Um, so what we can do is we can set up a couple of variables up top um, real quick. And so if we do like const, uh, you said the room or no, what's the, the ID for the thing that we're looking for? It is center. Center, ID. cool. So if we do center yeah. equals. Very yeah. selected. Exactly. Yeah. That's and basically then... what, what Greensock is using under the hood is query selector, which is really cool because you can pass any like yeah. non CSS queries that you can think of um, and target elements that way rather than having to just pass in like a variable or Perfect. something. Um, yeah, so yeah, I mean, we, we could do it either way. This will just scope it to the castle just in case yeah, this uh, is someone, nice. someone will use a center in another component. I don't want it like jumping out, right? Like that, that might be helpful. But the, the really abstract and un <laughs> like center, that's definitely going to be reused, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Probably not. But might be good cool. practice. Who knows? Cool. So um, if you do gsap.from center, and then we want to kind of bounce it up. Okay. So um, let's do a scale y. So it'll bounce in from. Yeah, on the y axis. Cool. And so. so, yeah, do scale y zero. Okay. So it'll be completely like pancake completely to start, flat. right? Cool. Yeah. Um, and then, like a scale x, um, maybe just like a little bit like 0 0.7 or 0 0.8 or something, just so it's like a little bit squished. Cool. When it bounces in. Um, so, by default, the duration is like 0 0.5. So, um, let's make that a bit longer, say like duration two, maybe. Ooh, and then, yeah, we, we can really yeah, see it now. Can you see it? Yep. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. So, so um, um, it's coming in from the top. Is, is that how we want it to come in? Yeah. So this is because um, of um, transform origin. So in SVG land, default transform origin is the top left hand corner. Um, so we want to change that to be the bottom. So you can say transform origin in camel case. Cool. Bouncing between all the screens. Um, and then you can just make a string and say uh, center bottom. I know Adam's in the chat. He likes, uh... I don't know. Are you a fan of center bottom or is it only like the uh, end cap but Adam, let me know. I'm 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 curious your <laughs> about about all the all the naming conventions. Cool. So Adam loves when we use words like bottom. Yeah. Um so yeah, then Greensock has like a bunch of different eases as well. Cool. So we definitely need a more bouncy ease because right now it's just kind of like Yeah, that's it's just the standard exciting. ease ease out or something. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I don't know. Can you open up? Yeah. You share? Yeah, sweet. So you can open up the uh, ease. I love this ease visual. Visualizer. I love it too. I can play yeah. with it. I'm going to it in the chat real quick. Uh, so this is kind of like when you're working in green sock, the, the green sock, this is like one of the tabs you have open at all times, pretty much. Like you kind of keep coming back to this and it's a great little, yeah. uh, great little thing. So are we going for a bounce? Yeah, I think, or an elastic. elastic. Elastic might be fun. Elastic, cool. All right, what uh, what settings are you thinking? I don't know. What have we got at the moment? Uh, it's one and point three. Let's try that. Let's see what that cool. see what that looks like. 
Roll that looks like a nice, nice juicy bounce. Let's see what we got. Oh, chat, you want to see that again? You want to see that again? Here we go. Oh, that's nice. It's a good. It's it's yeah. So the only thing is, it's um breaking out of the view box, so we might need to handle Ooh. that later. Yeah. Well, we can. You can set um overflow visible oh, on. That too. Yeah. I, I, so I usually, box, but that's smarter. usually you'll just have to make sure that there's enough space around the SVG in the B box, um, which I obviously I didn't account account for the amount of bouncing that we were going to do. That's a lot of bouncing. Overflow. What, what is it again? Um, overflow visible. There. Yes. Cool. Yeah, I think that was better. Yep. Yeah, that's Adam nice. said he. He keeps bumping into the ease visualizer. The value's not copy pasting properly. I've also found that I was I was I thought that was going to happen, but then you just copy pasted fine. So interesting. Well, it sounds like someone out. at Greensock is going to have to get on that. I don't know. I'll I'll see if I can find someone. Um, who <laughs> so um, all right. So great. This is looking great already. Are are we done? Are we good to go? Is this we're yeah. doing more? Uh, <laughs> so yeah if we want to put this onto a timeline now okay um we have to uh declare a timeline so um right at the top we're gonna say um const timeline cool we can say tl or awesome. so, whatever you want to call it really so i gave a little bit of a um uh, f foreshadowing. I almost said Schadenfreude. That, that's that's not that, that's not at all the same. Schadenfreude and foreshadowing sounds similar, <laughs> but they're very different. <laughs> um, foreshadowing with the use ref stuff. So we're actually going to um, set this timeline as a ref. Uh, <laughs> a little uh, Schadenfreude for later. <laughs> that's what happens in this brain. It just oh. it's just garbage. Um, uh, so instead of just doing a, a timeline, we're, we're going to put it into a ref so that like as it re-renders, it, it, it stays as, as kind of a constant and it doesn't just flush our timeline and um, completely set a timeline every time that this component needs to re-render because that would just be a complete waste. So you kind of want to set it once and not have to worry about it again. So I'm going to do timeline ref um, equals use ref. And then we can use, so, so this becomes a ref and to access the element that it, it's referring to, or, or no, sorry, to access, access its value, we're gonna do tlref.current. I'll, I'll walk you through that, but it's just a bit of a different access, uh, access method, a, a bit of a di different way to, to get to it. But now we can do um, tlref.current equals equals and then we can set our gsap timeline on this okay so equals gsap.timeline cool awesome cool so then to add the um the center animation to the timeline pop it below it because otherwise it feels weird timeline first and then the tweens after i think oh okay. wait like this yeah Okay. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure. Cool. Um, this one too. Um, I usually do the sets first, but I don't. I don't know whether that's just what I do. Um, so then, in order to add that to the timeline, um, I guess we go timeline ref dot current. Exactly. You're learning yeah. React, Gassy. You're you're a regular uh, Kent C Dodds or Dan <laughs> Abramov or whoever you know in the React world. You're you're them now. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> so yeah, we've now added that to the timeline. So nothing should have changed now if we play it again. Let me see. Uh, I should probably save it first, and then we can. Up oh, invalid hook call. Hooks can only be called. What did I? Do? Uh -huh. Oh oh oh. Here we go. I I should have defined that in the hook. So use callback as a hook. I shouldn't have defined the timeline within it. So I'm just moving that out, and now we're good to go. And yeah, it still runs just just as well. Uh, who just subscribed or who just followed? I missed it. I'm sorry. Welcome, though. You are now a horse. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Good vibes club. I'm loving it. <laughs> Christopher and Henry and Angela, thank you so much. Good vibes club. You're all Love wonderful. It. You really are. Cool. So, great. We've got our timeline set up. Now we can start adding things to that, right? Yeah, we can start adding things to it. So we should have the first little house bouncing in. 
Cool. Yeah. Um, and then we want to add the second little house, I guess. Second little house time. So the All right, one people. on the left. All right. So it's left. And that's room one. What did I call it? You said room one. Yeah. Let's say room one. Cool. That makes sense. Awesome. All right. So we've got left here. Uh, sh should we keep this left or put it to room one? Um, we can say we can say left. That makes sense. Cool. Sounds good. I keep missing the Henry. Thank you so much for subscribing. That's really kind. Really appreciate that. No growling. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna copy copy paste the um the first tween. Okay. Cool. So get in there. Cool. Okay, so we've got that current from, and we can change center to left. And change that to left, yeah. Sweet. But yeah, then you'll kind of notice that we've got a duplicate going on. Um, so we don't really need to have this duplication. Of um, code? So like of the scale, of code, scale. Yeah. Oh, got it, cool. So we've got like two tweens that are basically exactly the same. Okay. Um, Brody, stop growling at the door. Um, sorry, my dog. <laughs> fine. So um, what we can do, there are a few ways to do this. We could do staggering, but I think we'll keep it a little bit simple for now. Um, so there's a defaults object um, in the timeline itself. So we can go into that object and type defaults and then pass in another object. And then these are the default things that the um, children are gonna, in gonna inherit. Okay. Um, so we can copy out that duration and the transform origin and the ease cool. from there. And we're gonna get rid of it within. And then we can get rid of it there. Cool, I'm gonna save. Yeah, and it still works. So they're inheriting that from the timeline. So like each of these steps in, in the timeline are getting it from like the actual timeline itself unless we override it within that step yes yeah awesome. that's the one so we can um you can override it if you want to whoa henry gift and subs thank you so much my goodness henry thank you wow this chat is fantastic y'all are so great oh my goodness awesome awesome this is looking so good uh, do we want to do the same thing to? Uh, oh, I two? got a gift. You got a gift. You. I don't know what that is, but thank you. I'm yeah. really bad with Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing great so far. So well done. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, I'm letting I'm letting Brody out of the room. No worries. Should I? Yeah. I'll I'll take a water break. Uh, some some streamers have like a hydrate thing. I talk too much for that. I feel like I would uh just get interrupted. So. I'll... He's going to want to come back in in like two seconds, but we'll just, we'll keep, just keep doing this. Uh, I have Brody on in three weeks, I believe, right? Isn't that happening? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just a row at you. <laughs> it's, a, it's a duet, I think, is, is what we're going to do. It's not so much coding, yeah. She's have to play him Pavarotti. He loves it. It's oh, that's the funniest video. Um, our, <laughs> it's so good. I've, I've shown that to like complete strangers to you, and they've just cracked up laughing. It's so good. Uh, well, all right, are we doing right now and in, in room two? Yeah, so let's cool. do right room two. All right, I, I just want to quick kind of show uh, for everyone where room two is. So room two is the ID of a group down here, just in case you're kind of curious what that is. Um, and it contains all the stuff inside uh, the different rooms. So that's uh, room two. Uh, if you show like room one. Let's just oh, you're back already. Cool. So yeah, that's yeah. another group of a bunch of shapes inside it. So just in case you're wondering, what are we doing here? That's what that is. Cool. So now we've got right. Do we want to do the same thing? Yeah, just do the same thing. Awesome. This is uh, this is going pretty nicely. Okay. First one bounces in. Second one bounces in. Third one bounces in. We're looking good. Bounces in. Awesome. Great. So let's let's have like a little test and hook this up to um to the slider and then we can go back in and we can kind of animate some more things as well okay cool so how are we gonna hook this up to the slider he's figured out the door <laughs> this, okay. is, this is the velociraptor scene from jurassic park 
cool. Oh my god. Yeah. Thank you, Christopher. Christopher in the chat, clever girl. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Clever, clever Brody. <laughs> So good. Oh, it's pretty terrifying, but it's good. It's good. Okay, right, cool. so this at this point, this is where I would find the slider, like, um, and then add an event listener to awesome. it for either input or change, depending on what I want to do. So, how do you do that in React Land? Yeah. So here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, do the same thing uh, with this. We put our here. Let me scroll all the way down to the input. Oh, hold on. Oh, okay. There we are. Cool. Um, so right now, um, to do what, what we were doing before, I don't know if the site's going to be broken right now. Yeah. So here's here's the site as it was. Um, I, I, I know you can't see it, Cassie, but um, basically this, this this range slider changes state um, because the range input just by default kind of has um, a min, a max, and you can slide between that. You can define those steps. But right now, I think the the min is zero, the max is two, and we're able to like just slide between that and uh, change that state. So we already have this on change uh, callback for this. So for that, we can instead kind of make a function that um, updates our state. So I I I know we we want to change. Um, the, the timeline um, progress but we could maybe like log something out to the console or perfect. like bump something into an html element or an output cool. element or something first uh, wait what's in oh, oh an output element got it yeah so we can just do the console that works for me so we can do um yes. just console oh wow it fixed my terrible it's what very warm in here it's it's warm yeah, it's it's fine because the pink lighting makes makes me look like I'm just lit up by pink lighting rather than just pink. <laughs> so that's that's good. It it has the desired effect. You're doing great. <laughs> um, do we want to log out the value of uh, of the range slider? Yes, we do. Cool. So e dot target dot value. I'm gonna bring up the console. Lots of nice juicy errors in there, but let's clear that. All right, so uh, we get one, two, ah, uh, wait, hold on, uh, value current, right, because I'm not changing the value there. Let me comment that out. Let me come back. All right, so what what I did, I'm going to need to back up a little bit. So I'm, I'm setting it back to set current because um, with, with React, like when you have forms, you kind of need to do uh, setting the value, but also setting the way that you change that value. So right now, set current changes what the value of current is. So on change, this gets called and changes uh, this current variable. And that's how the value updates. So it's kind of this like cir circuitous way of handling the state and coming back to the input itself and saying, hey, this is now your value. So um, we're going to modify set current a, a little bit and that i'm going to say um let's just say update house or yeah update castle we're calling it castle so i'm going to make this function up top and this castle function here this update castle function oh, the only downside to the live share is that it like bounces you around when there's here i'm, I'm going to scroll up to the top there we go yeah like just like a nice shared thing but when one person wants to scroll it's it's always funky right like have you been jumping around a bit um i know i just can scroll myself you don't seem to be scroll jacking me oh weird because you're scroll jacking me am i oh sorry yeah. no, i'll no, just no, totally scrolling. oh because i'm pinned on you i think unfollow participant there we go all right now we're good there's a little <laughs> pin up at the top right sorry i've been sabotaging you <laughs> that's totally fine i i apparently opted in to follow you so that's not at all on you you're you're curious and looking around it's cool. So const equals, uh, thank you, uh, Pels Kong. And I, I feel like I know who that is and I'm blanking. I'm so bad with like connecting usernames and people. So sorry. Sorry if I, I, I know who you are and I'm forgetting. So, um, oh, you won last week. That's what it was. You, you were one of the winners from, uh, from Adam show. Good to see you. Thanks for coming back. Um, yeah, that was it. Um, so update castle. I'm on uh, one in the chat has said that you have two values on that input, which you do. Two values on the input. Yeah, 305 and 311. You are right. Good call. Thank you very much. Cool. So 
and I just broke it because I saved it with this. So update hassle, we're gonna do a function that takes in uh, E, and it just says like the event, or no, wait, no, it's gonna be the value, uh, so value. And then uh, is it set, set current? Yeah, that's a terrible uh, variable name, but we can change that. Okay, cool. So now as we go through that, we can also log value and see what it is there. So as we move it, one, two, there we go. So we're moving it around and yeah, we are getting zero, one, and two. Do we, do we want to make the max any higher? We want to make the max lower. So we want to get a value between zero and one. Okay. Saving that, let's check it out. So we've got one, zero. Cool, it's coming through well. So what values are we getting now? Zero and one? Yep. Cool, that's because the default steps in a range input are one. So we want to take those steps down um, by a bunch. Let's take them down like by a whole bunch to start off with. So make it step 0 0.01. Okay, so you put that on the input? Yeah, on the input. 0 0.01. Okay, now I'll come back here. So, oh, I cannot read property title of undefined. All right, that's something that's not with your code. I don't know why that's coming in. Title. Okay. Is that the only title? Yeah, let's just comment this out for now. I don't know why that's throwing an error. Description. Why are they throwing errors suddenly? What did I change? Okay, here we go. So now that we're back. All right, yeah, we are down to, uh, so, yep, going all the way to one, but by awesome. 0 0.01 increments. Looking good. Super cool. So, um, oh, Killian says we're overwriting current. Um, uh, Yes, that's that. Thank you so much, Gillian. That's what it is. Yeah, current before was going through that. So yeah, we, we, we will hide those for now. Thank you, Gillian. Good eye. And thank you for being here. I didn't I didn't see you come in before. So thank you so much. Good to see you, man. Um, cool. All right. So we've we've got our little range slider now. Awesome. So what we can do like really simple um, way to progress through the timeline is we have um, timeline dot progress okay. in GreenSock. Um, and that takes a value from between zero and one. So um, where we're logging stuff out to the console, we can just say timeline.progress. Okay. And let's see what happens. Cool. Uh, oh, oh, is that a, um, that's a function? Or, yeah, oh, oh, function. Okay, so, and, and then we want to put the value in, into that. We want that. to yeah, pass in the, the value into that. Okay, okay. So let, let me just say this back so I, I know I'm getting it. So that timeline ref dot current is our actual timeline. And then there's a function on GreenSock timelines that allow you to scrub between the start and end. And so with value, we're passing in like a almost a percentage of that timeline, right? Yeah, so progress um, will just take you to a certain point in the timeline, but because we're using the range slider, obviously the value that we're passing into there is changing from zero to one. So it's kind of allowing us to scrub through. Got it. So we're getting a weird result. Um, I'm not sure if you can see it on yours. Do you have um, Storybook open? Yeah, I do. Hmm. See. No, uh, you shouldn't have to, Leah. You, sh you should be good. Natsa Franiak, thank you so much for, for following. You are now a horse. Appreciate it. Welcome. Sorry, uh, the, the names come up so small on my screen right now because of like what I've got set up. So I'm like squinting and trying to say names as the letters are bouncing. It's, it's, I need to make Ooh. that easier. Okay, so we need to go, I think we just need to go um, set the timeline to be paused. So I think it's uh, trying to play and then we're also trying to change the progress. So in the timeline settings up at okay. the top. Okay. 
timeline like oh no default. so in the in the defaults object we can cool. put it in there well not in defaults but in the timeline object cool what do so i just say for so... defaults or after defaults yeah yeah say um, pause and true cool there will be good no, I think it's not going it. at all hmm interesting yeah interesting indeed I'm trying to think what this might be it's definitely going to be a react thing progress um hmm. all right let me think so Killian's already figured it out now. <laughs> um, all right, so at this update castle, let's move this to a use effect. Give me um, so this is only going to get called when um, its dependencies change. Uh, hey, Tanner, welcome. Thank you for joining in. Hello. Um, so we're going to have a couple uh, dependencies here with this. So um, let's have current as, as a dependency for what it, it changes on. Um, but let's move this bit to here so that when current updates, it's going to um, then call this. Let's see if that use effect is not defined. I haven't imported use effect from React. Let me do that. So this is another hook that value is not defined, right? Because I need current. Okay. That's still not going. All right, trying to figure this out. Um, I can't help you because I don't have the React knowledge. I know, that's, uh, that's completely on me. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Okay, so it definitely takes a, um, a number Right, like it, 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 it takes yeah. a note. Okay. I just popped it into a code pen here and it's working. So cool. Um, timeline if. Not seeing value is not defined. That was working. If timeline ref dot current. Let's make sure that we are not um, calling this without it being there. Okay, shoot. Thank you for following Mast. Appreciate it. Especially while we're struggling, or I'm struggling through this, uh, this little bit of code, trying to think of what this might be. Um, progress. More horses. Woo! So um, do we don't need to hit play or anything because it's just going to scrub through that? Yeah, just timeline up progress because okay. the play is technically us moving the, the range slider yeah, around. Interesting. So I just uh, set progress, like, like I, I set that to be 0.5 and it worked. But then as I play with the range slider more, uh, it gets really Why is wonky. it getting bigger? Yeah, what's what in the world is happening there? So unchange, that just happens there. It's like it's what is going on there? Uh check if current is a string. Yeah. Um let's see. So by the way, the, these variables are terrible because they have current and current. It's like it's creating a new timeline, like lots and lots and lots of times over. Input values are always strings per spec. Okay, so we might need to pass it a, um, oh yeah, it, it, interesting about the timeline bit you just said, Cassie. Sorry, I'm processing lots of things. Um, type of, and then current. Let's see if Killian's got it. Yeah, it's a string. Okay, so best way to change that to a number. I'm surprised that Greensock isn't taking that string and making it into 
I feel like it's usually pretty good about that. Yeah, I feel like it would just yeah. break if it was a if it was a string. It wouldn't do all of this weird stuff. So I think it's create yeah. lots and lots of timelines. I I don't know how like what React does under, underneath the hood, but right. A uh, little parse float. Yeah, it's 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 working the like it's it's working the same if I pass it a string. Because I, I think it's doing that under the hood. Shouldn't the use callback have a dependency array? Otherwise, it'll run every render. It uh, use callback. Thank you. That's what I'm missing. Good call on that. So, yes. That's ex uh, or I mean, I, I'm not positive yet, but it should have a dependency array. Let's see if that's... Yes, good. Who, who, who was that? Super weird that it's only doing Double strange Anton. things. To the left hand. Thank you so much for being here. Good Thank you. call on that. Um, let's see. Can we all give Double Anton in the chat a round of applause? Thank you so much, Double Anton. I appreciate it. Um, Cassie, can I send Double Anton a sticker? Because that, uh, yeah. Okay, cool. You have all the stickers. All right, cool. Double Anton, uh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Awesome. We can keep rolling now. This looks great. Uh, and we can see. Is this, is like this where I, I plug 11 <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so we're scrubbing through, looking great. Awesome. So, yeah, like this is good, but also we don't really want to give, we want the person to choose between like three set options of mm. bouncy castles, right? We want like the first room and the second room and the third room. Right. Um, which we need to decide what we're going to call them. I think we need. Oh, chat, help us out. Yeah, so this. chat, here we go. Um, we have the opportunity here to kind of brand uh, these houses. This is completely on you. I, I, I want your input here. Um, we have, so is, is, is the base going to stay this way or is the base going to animate too, Cassie? Um, I think that we can have just the base to start off with, like a small little base, and okay. then we'll have house one, and then the house, the room two and the room three. So I don't know. We need like names for them, like super mansion or. And then I like, like child play one. or like the first one yeah. or something, right? Like, so yeah, here we go. Bounce, bounce master, bounce, bounce master, master XL. I love that. <laughs> um, all right. How should we put these? Let's see. Um, let's see what I've got. So I removed the image from this. No, I didn't yet. Here we go. Let's delete this. Cancel. So I'm, I'm going to Oh, yeah, big boy, big design. boy, biggest boy. <laughs> <laughs> Did someone say that? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Ben, Ben. Big boy, bigger boy, biggest boy. <laughs> we have small boy, small boy, big boy, bigger boy, biggest boy. <laughs> <laughs> to anyone who doesn't know, that is very on brand for Cassie. Um, <laughs> that is that is kind of, uh, yeah, her, her, her thing. Uh, so they made it into a t shirt. <laughs> yeah, they so made it into like, a t shirt. I'm just doing a talk. <laughs> so I was like, oh. <laughs> You were just at a Langstore show and just uh, <laughs> just saying your stuff, and someone's like, "That's a shirt." Um, I, I love that people thought that I was calling them pointy boys and curly boys to be like quirky and funny, and I'm like, I literally don't know what the real names for them are. <laughs> like, That's even just... better. I was like, she's so clever. You're like, I, I I couldn't I couldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't tell you ever tried. Steph, hey! Oh my god, that's so funny. Uh, Cassie, as you said, eleven T apparently uh steph right. yeah, Steph just came through steph so good to see you thank you for coming through love the curly boys awesome so um here in in our um actual cms now we can drop those names so create your castle let's go with uh are, are we doing small boy uh, are we doing the boys yeah big boy uh, wait, uh, so give them to me cassie is it small boy small Brody. boy Small boy, big boy, and biggest boy. Yeah, let's do that. Are, are we doing three or four? Ooh. How many stages do we have in the illustration? Is it is it let's the do, center left to right? Is that three? Let's do one, two. Yeah, let's just do three. Three okay, is simple. Cool. Let's do three. Cool. And uh, chat, we'll be coming back to you for like a, a, a description for them. But uh, choose. Cool. So now we have that, and we'll be able to pick from that a bit later, but I just want to lock those names in somewhere. Cool. And we're publishing that. Small boy, big boy, biggest boy. Cool. So we've got our names locked in. Thank you, chat. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ben. Um, cool. So now what? 
No. No. We 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 want to lock into the small boy. We want to lock into the big boy. We we'll lock into the biggest yeah, boy, right? So that's what we're gonna do. So um, let's do on our on our range slider. Um, we want to do a step of like zero point three three. I think we've got three stages. Makes sense. Okay, let's check it out. Boom. We got. Uh, so I guess the first one's our small boy, right? So so like yeah. to start, we're we're not actually going to use that. So should we should we make the min point zero or sorry or point three three? To start? Yeah. Okay. Oh no! Wait, we want to animate to it. Ah, uh, okay, cool. That makes sense. Yeah. It's uh, okay. So min zero. Cool. We got that. We got that. We got that. Nice. It's going, but it's it's not animating anymore. Yeah. So that's because progress, all progress does is it just moves to a point in time, uh, right? So we're just saying, like, go to this point of time in the timeline. Uh, and when we were using the range slider, we were effectively, like, lurping from one point to another manually using the range slider. So we were providing some, like, easing along the route. Cool. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to, it's a bit meta, but we're going to animate the progress of a green sock timeline with a green sock tween. Whoa. <laughs> it's, it's a bit, bit inception-y. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome though. Love it's um, basically green sock, sock tweens. They are just performant property manipulators, like right. number manipulators. So they just lurk from one point to another. Cool. Um, so you don't have to necessarily be animating like um, visible properties of an element or um, elements themselves. You can animate just any numbers. So in this case, we're animating time. Cool. That's which is awesome. cool. Very timey wimey stuff. Oh, so great. cool. In um, yeah, in the same the same bit where we've got our progress, um, we're going to do uh, GSAP.2. Okay, so here, uh, ab above or below? Um, we can just get rid of the timeline progress now. Cool. Sweet. So, uh, timeline, All right, okay, so a, a GSAP2. Yeah, GSAP2. Cool. Um, and then we're going to um, say timeline ref.current. Cool. And then pass in that object again. And what we're going to be um, tweening is the progress. So we're going to say progress. And then what is it? Is it like the, what's the value current? Yeah. I'll, we should That's rename these at some point, but we're too deep. We're too deep cool. in now. <laughs> That's fine. So let's, let's have a little look at that. Let's see what happens. Oh, that should just, okay. Yeah. They're yeah. Animating in, they're animating out. Awesome. awesome. They're probably doing it super fast, though. Very fast. Doing it super fast. Cool. So that's because the default time is 0 0.5. So we're tweening that in 0 0.5 seconds. So let's change that to like two seconds, and then that will be a nice time. Duration two. Yeah. Thank you, Pixels Pencil, for following. You are now a horse. Good to have you. All right. So, um, Awesome. There we go. Nice, smooth, and bouncy. It's looking great. Cool. On on reverse, it's a little funky, but I think you yeah. know that. Cool. So um yeah, what's what it's doing is it's just playing in reverse, and we've got an elastic ease right. that's kind of going like shooting over beyond yeah, and then bouncing like back. So in reverse, it's doing the bounce and then going back again. Right. Um so I guess we need to check whether it's going that way or that way in reverse or cool. or not if if we're um, moving towards more rooms or le or fewer rooms fewer rooms yeah cool. okay so, so that would be when i have a like a previous value um yeah object okay cool so i would want to have a previous value and then check against it cool um is this the time when when we refactor the word current to be um something better because the the timeline ref dot current and current dot is is kind of range value range yeah or uh is value too bad of a is value bad no because it is it's the value from the range slider that's cool. let's go through i think that's like i like it when it's very explicit because you can follow it back um 
this needs to come out. Uh, cool. Uh, let me go through. Hopefully this is like a quick refactor. Update castle stays. This becomes value. Uh, all right, so we got value. Um, I like the horse club. Welcome to the horse club. Nice. Thank you, Christopher. <laughs> um, all right. Do we have that or current anywhere else that we need to? So I'm only seeing timeline ref. Oh, here you go. Value. And let's hit save and see where I missed it. No, we got them all. It looks like cool. All right. So now we can have like previous value, right? Yeah. Cool. Previous value set previous. Could have probably done prev, but oh well. Being verbose is fine. Um, so I'm gonna put that in this update castle before we set value to the new value. I'm gonna set previous value to the current value. Does that make sense? Are you, are you yeah. Okay. So it'll be whatever the initial value. The range slider is. Yeah, so I'm going to use state as null for this previous value. And then, so we're going to compare those two, basically, right? So in this use effect before this timeline, um, be, be, before we tween this progress thing, we're, we're, we're yeah, going to Yeah, if you wanted to say, like, if the progress, um, if, like, the previous slider value is larger than the current slider value, then we're going down. And if it's the other way around, we're going up. Cool. So let's just check to make sure. Uh, all right, let's see. Okay, and then so else. Horse club make a nice sparkly sticker. That's a great idea, Angela. Horseclub.com is, is is that a thing, Adam? I'm I'm afraid to click that on stream. I really don't want to. Hey, Jamie, welcome. Uh, Jamie, by the way, is responsible for doing the logo and like the animation on the thing. He's just, Jamie, you are fantastic. Don't Hi, click Jamie. It. Don't click it. <laughs> thank, thank you, Henry, for saving uh, my Twitch channel, basically, is, is, is what I'm assuming. I'm assuming it would be an auto ban. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, going. Uh, so we're just going to do the same, same thing again. Oh, yeah, go in. Up. Awesome. So, so what are we going to do for um, this? You can copy the same tween. Um, okay. We'll just set the duration to be a lot faster. Okay. So, yeah, uh, duration 0 0.5 or 0 0.4 or something. Cool. So let's see. Oh, uh, I think I got them reversed. Okay. So I'm going to just flip around the little uh, greater than, less than. <laughs> That's cheeky way to do it. Cool. Going. Ah, yeah, nice. Yeah, it di di disappears much quicker. All right, so these are mixed, but that's fine. We're we're looking good now. Awesome. That's a cool trick. So, so kind of the trick is that we can tween faster if if we want to like hide the animation, right? Yeah. Cool. In reverse, I often do that. Like it's a really handy trick for um, UI elements as well, because things like you know, if you're animating a menu out, um, you can maybe do like a jazzy entrance animation. But if people want it to go away, they kind of just want it to. Right. I'm not, but they want it to bugger off um, quickly, so you can I make all the time. it faster. Or, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, Jamie, that is a storybook, Jamie has recently taken up Storybook and he uh, loves it. So I'm speaking for him. Jamie loves it. Uh, it's his favorite thing in the world. Um, he, he couldn't live without it. Storybook is really cool. Yeah. Um, cool. So one thing you might notice is if you wait until the animation plays um, and then you try and reverse it, it's fine. But if you try and reverse it while it's still playing. You've got two conflicting tweens and it all gets a bit confusing. Oh. So we can use overwrite true in there and then it will overwrite the values uh, from the previous tween. So it so, like just kills the, the, the previous tween and just jumps in and says mine's first basically. In, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, mine's more important. Sure. Just Trump's. It's like a Trump card. Obama card. We say Obama card. Obama. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh God, <laughs> I can't even say that word anymore, can we? Um, so what was it? Overwrite true. <laughs> Overwrite true. Yeah. So just pop that in. Um, I can't see where you're typing. Oh wait. Can I see where you're typing? Just in the. Uh, yeah, that's great. The just both of those. Awesome. And then that should be nice and tidy. Yeah, that moves around much better. Nice, great tricks. Oh. I, I did not know about a, much of this. This is fantastic. Learning so much. So yeah, that's that's cool. But we, how much time have we still got left? Because we can add more animations. We have maybe, let's say 20 minutes or so. I mean, cool. yeah. Let's, let's add let's more animations. Yeah. Like That's 13 to 20 hour. something. Oh, let's style our range slider, actually. Let's I do like that. I like that idea, because right now, this yeah, is not the coolest great. thing. Chrome defaults are not my favorite, but hey, that's me. <laughs> hey, why is Jacob me say, oh, yeah, <laughs> why is everyone shit. speaking German? I was like, oh, do I? I've, I know I'm tired, but I don't yeah, think I've... I was, oh, <laughs> oh, this whole time I've had the German feature on. I'm so sorry. <laughs> We've been... We've been translating through to German. Uh, no, so real quick for the thing, Schadenfreude. Uh, I tried to say foreshadowing earlier, and I almost said Schadenfreude, which is like a weird reversing of the sounds, but a totally different word. So, yeah, a little <laughs> bit of Schadenfreude for later. Um, all right, so <laughs> cool. We are styling a range slider. So I gave you a link. So you, you can you can go to that link and I'm gonna pet Brody because he's I, sad. I, I lost it. I was hoping you would tell me it again when we were uh, live. Oh, okay. We can do that. <laughs> I'm also gonna I'm gonna multitask. I'm gonna pet Brody at the same time. You are, yeah. That's that's pr priorities, honestly. Um, <laughs> I think I think I agree with yours. Uh, finding that style um, thing. It's called Daniel's. Oh, so if you search range CSS in Google, maybe. Oh, here we go. Range. My it's danielstern.ca range. Right, you got it. Yeah, sweet. Okay. So I just want to grab all of yeah. this. What am I well, what am I grabbing here? What am I grabbing? So uh, let me have a little look. Still multitasking with the dog. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Cool. So this is this is a really handy thing that I use um, when I'm styling range sliders because range sliders are horrible um, to style. Yes. So if I have to style one from scratch and I'm not inheriting an existing like form style, then I usually jump to this to start off with. Um, so you can go down. You can choose options from the drop down, which is quite nice. Um, so you can oh, see like bootstrap. Whoa, sure. that's that's a um, what you call it? What's that? A Battlestar Galactica reference? Lo-fi, <laughs> Terminator. Okay, w which are we going for? Magic Unicorn Journey. That's <laughs> all right. What do we want? Um, yeah, we can go with Magical Unicorn Journey. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's swap that it's out. Quickly becoming like in in a girl's <laughs> birthday party. Uh, so um, in that thumb. Um, section there, you can change the hex code of, um, uh, okay. of yeah. So you can paste in. I know you've already got like colors yeah, themed colors on the site. So if you just paste in a hex code. All right. So we got uh, rows 500. Let's go with that. Cool. Thumb border. Can we just. Can probably just get rid of the thumb border. Yeah, actually. I was trying to do that and I did. It's border gone. width. Down the cool. Thumb border width. What do, what do we want there? Or, or yeah, just make it zero. Up. Yeah. Uh, thumb yeah. shadow color. I don't know. That's, that's just, uh, just leave that. Gonna keep it at, at where it is. Yeah. Um, cool. Now track. Do we want to do anything with the track? Make that like the blue or something or the yellow? <laughs> People want the dog remotely. <laughs> I'll, I'll get Brody to do more of a reason everyone can pet him remotely. <laughs> genius. Um, um, track yellow maybe or let's see how Yeah, track yellow, that sounds good. Uh maybe this yellow. Let's 
go a lighter yellow. I'm just trying to go to the right yellow. If only oh, that good. Maybe whenever I need uh, help with this stuff, I'm, I'm going to get rid of the border because I feel like that was throwing it off. Yeah. I, I need help with colors. Gross. Huh? Borders are gross. We need yeah. nice flat, chunky things. Yeah, this is looking way better. Um, I, I always ring uh, George Francis, who's coming on next week. I'm always like, George, help me with colors. Is this a good color? So if George he's is watching, he's my color person. Uh, cool. So are we good? Do, do we just grab the CSS for the whole thing? Is it the same CSS everywhere or what? Yeah, same CSS everywhere. That's so you can just grab it. Thing. Okay, cool. Yeah, it so, is a, it's a bit of a confusing thing, but less confusing than styling a range slider by yourself. So. Yes. So props to Daniel Stern, uh, who I assume is in California based on that URL. Um, so thank you, because let's see what we got. Oh, that is so much better. Great. So and it's nice. It, it works nicely um, cross browser as well. So. Oh, nice. Oh, this is looking awesome. so good. Looking so good. All right, cool. So we're, we've, we've got a styled slider now. Uh, now. Oh, nice, George. George has used this tool many times. Cool. So now what do we want to uh, get to? Anything else we want to add to this? So, yeah, we want to. Um, yeah, we want to do a bit more animation. Okay. Animation bits. So right now, I think the base, it's too big. We want the base to like stretch out um, as, as the um, houses are popping in. Right. So let's go back to our code. Cool. Um, now the main thing we've got at the moment, we've got a timeline and each of those tweens are two seconds. Um, so they're all flowing like one after another. Right. So we want to keep them at that point because that's the point that the range slide is going to. So we're going to use some absolute positions in the green sock timeline. Um, usually I wouldn't use absolute positions because the cool thing about green sock timelines is everything kind of flows one after another. And if you're saying start this always at three seconds, if you change other things over here, it doesn't then kind of flow through the timeline. And then it just seems a bit pointless. Like why are you using a timeline if right. the things are going to flow nicely? Yeah, no, but in this case, it's kind of going to be good because okay. we want things to start at particular times. Okay. So what we're going to do is the left tween, um, after the um, object that we're passing in, just pop a comma. Cool. And then we're just gonna put a number. So we're gonna say, um, so it's immediately after the first one. So two, two seconds, that's what we're gonna so do. So we just do number is the key and two is oh, the Oh no, value. just the number. So just, just a number by that itself. Makes more sense. I was like, I don't remember ever using this. Got it, that makes sense. Yeah. Cool. And then the last one, we're going to say four. Yeah. That's my math skills. It's very late. <laughs> great. No. Uh, counting by two is tough. Let's cool. chat, chat. Just play along. Um, cool. <laughs> so looking good. Still looks good. So then we want other things to start at those times as well. So the first one um, we want the base to size from the middle. Um, so we're going to say, um, or oh, we should set the base. Okay, yeah, let's set the base. So we're going to set a starting position for the base okay, up at the top exactly. where we've got the other set for the castle opacity. Okay, cool. Um, and thank Very you to nice. who just followed. Cool, GSAP. Uh, base, you said? Okay, I yeah. need to make that. We need so to make another another variable. Base, and is that just ID base? Um, yeah, I think so. Yes, Fine. it is. Cool, looking good. And uh, that, my friends, is why you add IDs to your SVG groups and stuff because it makes this it makes animating Achieving possible. It. Who? Yeah, awesome. So. Gset set base. You've done the syntax wrong, so I you sure want to did. Coffee, coffee. The it's late in the evening. It's wait. No, what time is it there for you? So late. Don't even worry about it. Let's just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> Equally late. Don't worry. <laughs> so we want to do scale x zero. 
So we want it to be squished on the cool. x-axis. Um, and then we're going to do a transform origin center. Oh, yeah, cool. I think it needs to be a string. Yeah. Cool. OK. And then that means we can animate like from those values to some different values. Awesome. So in the timeline, um, after the first tween. Oh, another thing we can do is we can get rid of those um, semicolons and we can um, just, yeah, chain them like. Nice. So we can get rid of uh, timeline ref current as well. That's nice. Cool. Yeah. So um, to anyone, anyone who hasn't done this, uh, kind of like with uh, promises where you can chain dot then dot then that kind of thing, uh, you can chain your timeline uh, function. So we have all these froms on the original timeline. Oh, wait, can we do it as we call it? Or we should probably do it not when we first call it, right? Um, oh, yeah, not when we first call it. Yeah. So the first one needs yeah. to have, um, yeah, that's the one. Awesome. So after the first tween, the from center. Um, OK, from center. After oh. that, we're going to say two. Uh, OK, right, right in here, two. Yeah, and then base. Cool. And then we kind of want it to just cover the first little house. So like half the size, 0 0.5, maybe. So scale X. Yeah, scale X, sorry. That's fine, 0 0.5. 0 0.5. And then um, we want the duration to be like the same as the house, maybe. So, oh no, but it's already inheriting that from the defaults because we added defaults. So <laughs> we <did>. <laughs> we're already doing, doing the work for us. Um, cool, so let's try that. Let's see what it comes out on the next step. Ah, because we have not put in a position parameter, and that is doing the default um, timeline thing. So we need to put in a zero position parameter, and then it will start at the same time. Perfect. There it is. Cool. That's great. And then... So that's quite bouncy. It's a little bit too bouncy, I think. For the... I don't know. I, I don't know what you just said. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? What? <laughs> I yeah, think what it would that mean? <laughs> to have a slightly less bouncy ease for this okay. one, just because it shoots out a little bit at the edges. So keep um, these in the other sorry. ones, but... Um, I'm going to override this one. So instead of like 0.3, maybe like 0.15? Let's do a, a back ease. Ooh. So um, we're going to say ease... Um, what's the syntax? Ease back. So, where are you? Instead of back elastic back out. out, we're going to say back out. Yeah, 1.7. Cool. Let's try that. Awesome. A little too slow. Let's probably should override the duration on that, right? Yeah. So, let's make that like duration one. Cool. Yeah, that's looking better. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's a really good call. I don't know if I, I would have spotted that, but that, that feels way better. And then I think the castle comes out. We want the base to come out first, I think, just slightly. Okay. So okay. Um, let's go to the first tween and just say, um, yeah, zero, the position parameter, make that like 0 0.5. You need, a comma. you need to comma separate things. And then we don't want that duration overflowing into the, the next bit of the timeline. So we want to make the duration of the first tween 1.5 now. Because we want the first section of the timeline to just be two seconds and the next one to be two seconds. So is that going to be in here? Yeah. Duration 1.5. So this is the nice thing about defaults is you can kind of set them early on, but then you can override them if you need to. Awesome. Cool. That's looking great. Cool. So then we want to do the next bit of the base to like the left-hand side, don't we? So right. um, 
we're going to want to change the transform origin for this. So we can copy, copy that base tween again, or you can just type it out. I keep telling you to copy paste things, but typing out is good because you learn things. Sure. <laughs> but at the same time, type. I mean, yeah, let's, let's go for it. Copy pasting is how I make everything. Um, <laughs> all right, cool. So we've got two base. So scale. So we're going to want to add a transform origin. Yeah, transform origin. Um, right. And then we're going to say, oh, I, I always forget which one is first. I, I feel like if you put like right center, it just works. I don't yeah, know. but I, I might want percentages in the next one. Oh, okay, so, cool. Yeah, but let's let's try let's try right center for now, and then if we need to fine tune it, we'll try and use percentages, and we'll work out which one's which. Got it. So where are we send the scale to? So for this one, I think like zero point seven five. It's like two-thirds of it isn't it but it's a bit more than that 0 0.7 oh weird uh transform origin putting it in there makes it break the initial animation wait let's see do we need to set it in the a uh, one from above two? Oh yeah maybe let's set it in the one, one above just put center center happens no it's still breaking there that's weird okay let's see in code what is going on center center hmm. oh what time oh yeah okay because we still got the position parameter in there because it's late sorry um so we've got position parameter still zero in that tween the second one uh... So we want that position parameter to be two. two. And then the one that you copy, did you co copy one underneath yet? No, we're this still on copy one. one. That's good. See, kids, this is why you don't copy paste. All right, you copy position yeah. parameters and it all goes, <laughs> goes to the neck. All right, looking great. Cool. The uh, the, the right center bit worked. Um, I'm, so I'm not sure have... if it's what you want, if you want it to be different. And totally cool. That looks perfect. That looks right. great. Cool. Okay, cool. So then let's um let's do the next slide. Copy paste. Oh no, wait, we've got a little bit of a the house is kind of popping out before the base, isn't it? So we want the base to go out first. So let's change the timings of that again. Good call. Okay, so that was so we don't want to make the house 1.5 duration. Okay, so 1.5 and the other one, wait. Oh no, so this would be 2.5 and the duration would be 1.5. Okay, so 2.5 and then duration it is 1.5. It starts at 2.5, yeah. So we're going to have like the base going out a little bit first and then the house popping up. Perfect, looks great. Yeah, that definitely works. Awesome. Sweet. Insert time is here. Oh, thank you, Scott. Scott found it for us. Appreciate it. You left the zeros here doing both. Yes, they, thank you also, Jay Nielsen. Appreciate it. I uh, I miss it entirely. Good eye. And thank you, Christopher, for pasting those links in the chat. I really appreciate you. You are fantastic. You are fantastic. Thank you. Um, cool. So last one, right? So Yes, the last one. So we're... This. I'm going to paste the base thing. Uh, I'm going to put four and then four... 0.5 on the right and then duration point well, uh, 1.5 so same kind yes. of thing right and then the moving this to the left so that the transfer margin happens on the left and we're going to make scale one yeah awesome sorry if i'm skipping ahead no that's perfect it's a uh... Almost nine o'clock here, so my brain started switching off a yeah, little bit. No, so you can to, jump ahead. Off, of offload like, some of your. Hey. It's looking great. It's awesome. That worked. That's so good. That's cool. So good. Wow, Cassie, this is great. I really. Bouncy castle builder. It's so fun. So this is the small boy. I think this is the big boy, and this is the biggest boy. Let me check our uh, our castle creator. That's looking. Oh, wait, yeah, let's check. Here we go. Small boy, big boy, biggest boy. 
So we got that data in there. Um, and then we can go through and I can set, I can bring this stuff back at some point. Um, I'll have to change it over because right now current is not an integer, right? Like, so it's, I'll have to make it so that it's going off of an index, but basically we can bring it in so that uh, small boy like appears underneath, biggest boy, all that kind of stuff. And it'll be uh, a little creator component. And I'm really just, it's just so much fun. Awesome. I'm gonna have a little play around and make the um, little flags animate in as well. That would be cool. Oh, that's so good. Oh, I need to um, yarn dev start up our oh, That's really good. Yeah. So that's, it's like a really cool technique that like the fact that you can tie um, green stuff timelines into like user interactions. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I have a very small flat. <laughs> Everyone's just like in. Totally fine. <laughs> you're, you're, you're making it work. Uh, but yeah, here's our little site. It's kind of uh, cramped here. Let me see if I can. There we go. Oh, nice. Yeah. So we'll, we'll throw some um, some um, styling on it and stuff in, in uh, like after the stream. Because to everyone watching, basically this site is going to be like continued to be built upon. Next week we're having George on. George is uh, going to make a generative team component. So like that, that kind of like um, meet our team and it's like a bunch of faces. He's going to come in and make that fun and bouncy and uh, do some of his generative magic. And then Liam Egan's coming on the week after. And so we're going to finish this website out with four components or, or George, I, I, I could be speaking for you in the wrong way. I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, but what, whatever George is going to do next week is going to be awesome. And uh, yeah, we're, we're going to be finishing th this out with uh, four awesome components. Let me see if I can really quick, super quick. I don't want to take up any more of your time, Cassie, but I also want to fix Adam's awesome thing because I broke it earlier. Let's see if just adding a bunch of height to this because um, when, when we built it for CodePen, we built it um, with some of the, the stuff just on the body because you can kind of do that when you're working in CodePen, right? It's like... Um, your canvas is kind of the body where if you're bringing it into a component, you kind of have to uh, constrain it to that component. So let me see if like a height of 700 makes it not break. Let's see if that's better for, yeah, I, I there's something screwy about the height there, but let's see if we can get, all right, let's get the rest is working at least. Uh, not totally. There's something about the height variable that's a little messed up. But overall, it's so, so good. Your canvas is your body. <laughs> Thank you, Killian. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so we've got two awesome components on this. This one uh, turns your email into Amazing. a bunch of kids bouncing in a castle. And then this one uh, is just a really fun bouncy castle generator. So great, Cassie. Thank you for these animations. Um, so now... I need to figure out real quick. Let me see if I can do this. Um, how to uh, get the entire chat from today and make sure that we get everyone who entered. Let me try to do that. Let me see if I can paste. Um, hmm. Okay, so I'm in a bit of a conundrum and I don't want to hold up everyone, but. Uh, I promised y'all stickers and a raffle no, gift. Nice. And I need to make sure that I get it to you. So whew, I'm going to say, um, make sure you check your uh, Twitch. Um, your Twitch, shoot, I'm completely blanking on it. Uh, your Twitch account, because I will whisper to you there if you win. Um, there was something that went a little bit wrong with the bot, I think. So I'm going to go through, manually do it. I can uh, record the drawing so that it, it's, uh, it seems fair or whatever. I, I could throw that video up on YouTube or something, but uh, kind of playing fast and loose with, with, with the raffle here. But uh, I will um, get back to you all, okay? If, if you entered, I promise I will uh, make it good and I'll let Cassie know who won. And Cassie, if you need any help with um, mailing those out or anything, let me know. I will uh, send you some American stamps um, and I'm sure that'll work. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool. But, I, I've um, got lots of stuff. It's all good. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you um, for having me on. That was loads of fun.
I'm so glad. Thank you so much for your time, for your amazing creation, for teaching me a whole bunch. And uh, we got we got Greensock and React working together, Cassie. I think that is like, like we got hung up once, maybe twice. We did. We we did it. So awesome job. Thank you so much. And uh, thank you to everyone in the chat. Um, please please follow Cassie uh, on Twitter on CodePen. I think Christopher dropped those links. And um, Cassie does some fantastic, fantastic workshops that one of you will be going to thanks to the raffle. So thank you to everyone who came. Really appreciate it. You are all fantastic. I'm going to end the stream here. Take care. Thanks for coming. See you later. Bye. Bye. It was lovely hanging out. <laughs> Bye. Bye.